Hey folks, I'm Ian Baker, and today we're gonna go over the 2020 Keystone Passport 267BH. This of course is a bunk model, as you can see right behind me. You have double over double bunks, 300 pound weight capacity back there, and excellent storage thanks to the fact that bottom bunk lifts up. You can see the door right back there. It's also very open and spacious because you have the super slide with the U-shaped dinette in trifold sofa helping to open up this main living space. If we take a look at the kitchen, what you will see is the upgraded countertops rather than a T-mold. This is a thermofoil style countertop. Uh, not a ton of prep space here. They help remedy that by giving you an undermount sink with a sink top cover, a recessed cooktop with a glass cover there. So that way you do have some prep space. Uh, but if, if you have to use both of those while you're cooking, you're pretty much SOL. That being said, there is a lot of space over here, which is great for a coffee maker, electrical outlets right up top there, right where you want it to be. So I am glad that you have the space there. The faucet and sink itself, it is a high rise brush nickel pullout faucet. I do like the pullout, uh, just it's a lot more functional. Again, the sink top cover, that is cutting board quality. So you can use it as a cutting board. Underneath is your single basin undermount stainless steel sink and it is a good size sink so that way if you have some residential pots and pans you need to put them in there you can do that the other thing that's nice about a pullout i will add is if you have a keurig which is what i usually go camping with you can take this guy move it right over here and just fill up the water basin in it without having to take it out minor things right uh over to the side as i mentioned it is a recessed cooktop glass cover furian brand glass cover just folds up and back creates a backsplash for you the knobs light up if you like that, if you're into it, blue light there. Uh, oven underneath, again, nothing huge, but it'll work if you want to bake some cookies. Underneath, I do love this. I think they nailed it. That is excellent pots and pans storage. I wish more manufacturers would do this because a lot of times you don't have spot for pots and pans and you do here. Plus, even more importantly, in my opinion, you still have space for a trash can. So uh, for the storage underneath, I think they absolutely nailed it. I love what they have done. Over to the side are your two full extension ball bearing drawers. Not the most convenient spot to put flatware, but it's not the worst spot either. Uh, underneath right there, you, you know, anything else you need, your dish rags, things like that. And you'll see here, open that up again, some more storage space there. So more spots for pots, pans, whatever else you want to throw in there. Um, you know, again, just more storage. You'll see the blue lights uh, again. I don't know why all manufacturers use blue. This it's some kind of phenomenon where all manufacturers got together and were like, hey, what color lights do you like? Blue. Blue's great. Let's do it. And everyone went blue lights. I don't get it. Just do white. It's so much classier. I digress. Uh, blue lights. So here we are. So this is uh, basically a courtesy light right by the doorway. So when you come in, it lights it up. That way you can turn all the rest of your lights in the RV off. Uh, it's pretty nice to have, especially if, you know, the kids have to get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, something like that. Um, I know it's way up here. A lot of times they have one in the back. This one I don't think does, but uh, again, it just provides enough light in the RV. You can see what's going on. Straight across from your sofa is the TV. So this is something that's a little bit different, right? You normally don't see this in a travel trailer setup. We see it a lot of times in motorhomes, uh, but this is one of the first floor plans I've seen it in a travel trailer. So uh, that is pretty cool. You know, I do like that kind of that setup. As far as having a, a rear bunk model, this is something that's a lot of times hard to achieve. So um, I think they did a decent job there. And then behind it, you have some storage space. You can see that right there. It's a swing arm mount, of course. A little bit of storage space right there. So uh, what is the downside here, in my opinion, is that while I love the overall setup, I love the storage underneath, my problem is where do I put all of my cups, my plates, my bowls? Um, you'll see a little bit. We have some storage over here. Uh, but you know normally that's kind of what that space is reserved for and you can still put some stuff up there behind the TV It's just I struggle a little bit with that. So uh, that's like the only downside. I really have to this layout uh, You'll also see the microwave there hood underneath with a light and a fan up top real quick I'll show you plenty of LED lights. It is nice and bright in here including the blue lights You'll see in a second uh, but plenty of LED lights on the ceiling. You have the AC this does open up for a quick dump, so that way when you're loading and unloading, it can help cool off this main area so that you're not sweating half to death on that hot day. Dometic fridge freezer combo, stainless steel front panels. Open that guy up, you'll see great space in there, plenty of room. This one does uh, run off both propane and electric, also has automatic switchover. And this is what I was referring to, right? So you have a pantry, 
And I guess this is kind of where you would have to put all of that, like I said, your plates, your cups, um, you know, bowls, things like that. Maybe reserve a shelf or two for that, use the other ones for pantry. But it is a big pantry space. And then next to that, Passport used to do like a, a, versa a versatile shelving system. It looks like they changed that up a little bit here. So instead you just have the wardrobe, which realistically is gonna be needed for the kids' clothes, especially if you're putting dishes and food in there. Uh, but you do have that, that space there. So in the back, 300 pound weight capacity, double over, double bunks. Passport's always done a good job on their bunks, having good weight capacity. And more importantly, since uh, you know for the last two, three years, their bunks have had uh, your your electrical outlets as well as USB ports and on a rainy day I love it because the kids can sit back here and you know although I don't love them being on electronics when we're camping on a rainy day you sit back here you do your thing I'm gonna watch TV and do mine so uh, I do enjoy that and obviously having them on both bunks means the kids aren't going to be fighting over who gets which bunk as for size I'm six foot you can see I can lay here um, and not touch the the wall I pretty much max it out I mean Maybe if you're six one, you can do it. Any taller than that, you'll have to curl up a little bit. But as a six foot adult, not an issue at all. As I mentioned, we can see this a little more when we go outside, but when you travel, what you'll do is you'll actually take uh, this mattress out, you'll throw it right up top, and that will allow you to easily curve this up. And as you can see, if you leave it on there, it won't work. But normally you can fold that up, that'll give you full access to that door, and this is awesome storage while you're traveling. When you do get to your destination and drop it down, I would recommend putting like a laundry basket underneath here. It's a great spot to put the kids' clothes. Um, yeah, you, obviously, whatever you need it for, you can use it for, but that's my two cents. Walking into the bathroom, uh, very uh, standard passport bathroom here. My toes hit the front uh, as far as shoulder space, no problem, but again, it is a little tight on the front. And as I always say, you can put your feet right up here. It's kind of like a built-in squatty potty, so you can make do. Um, plumbing access right there you know you get a tiny bit of storage you can probably uh, I don't know maybe it'll sneak a trash can in there I wouldn't count on it necessarily but ba basically plumbing access not much countertop space but still get you know access to the sink here electrical outlet mirrored medicine cabinet up top show you that storage there um, LED light there is only one but you know as long as you're not showering at night shouldn't be too big of a deal because the skylight lets in plenty of light during the day you have your vent fan tub shower I do like having tubs when you have uh, bunk models, just because if you want to be able to give them a bath, this gives you the ability to do that. Um, at six foot tall, you can see I am touching the ceiling here, but I get the skylight, gives me about an extra inch. You can probably be six one and still stand in the center, not have to duck down any taller. I can't say the same. We make our way back out. Dun, 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 dun. So this, this is uh, a little bit different too. Um, you know, I, I guess the spot to hang coats. You know, you see a coat rack there. You have a little shelf here, you know, I guess if you want to plug in cell phones or something, put them right up there, you know, maybe that, that'll work. A little bit different. I, I'm not sure if they have an intended use for it or if, you know, it's basically just what I said. It's a little bit different than your jackets are back here, especially with some wall space up near the bedroom, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but maybe that, maybe it's another purpose, right? Maybe people when they camp just love to rock robes and I, and I don't know it. Um, so maybe those are just all robe hooks. In the u-shaped dinette so with this u dinette um honestly i could see three people fitting here um the reason i say that is if you take a look at my knees and where my knees are currently at if you kind of mimic that on the other side you really only be able to put one more person in the back uh, you know in the back i think I, it would struggle to fit four people um in this dinette and getting back there <laughs> need to lose some weight. Uh, so this is personally just not comfortable. Um, <laughs> see that? I don't know. It's flexing, I swear. Um, I, I don't know if, if you know, this is intended, if I just have the table set up wrong, which I don't think I do, because you're going to want the curve. Maybe, maybe that's it, Sam. Maybe I just have the curve on the wrong side. Hold on. Let's find out. See if this makes life any easier. You get to watch me do it. Here we go. I think this is just going to be worse, but I could be wrong. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's not, not any better. Okay. I don't know. I'd say three people, uh, again, and it's definitely going to have to be a child back there. I, I just, I don't know if they just mounted the flanges too far toward the back or what, but that's, um, 
that is, is definitely a miss for me. That is a fail that needs to get fixed. Uh, but the nice thing about a U-shaped dinette, folks, is this does drop down. Makes a pretty good size bed. Um, this one, again, is not as deep as most, so you can probably sleep one adult here. However, where they did make up for that with sleeping space is here in the trifold sofa. Trifold sofas are fantastic places for sleeping. Uh, fold this out. Now it will block, you know, the kids or, or rather you from getting back into the bathroom, but you do have this additional sleeping space if you need it. There's an electrical outlet down here. It's a little tough to access, but it is there. But right around the corner, you have USB ports. Folks, there's a ton of USB ports in here. I mean, you have them in the bunk area. You have them right here. You have them back by the coat hook. You have them in the bedroom. If you have a device that needs to be charged, you'll be able to do it in here. You'll also see underneath uh, that, that LED blue light. There it is. And then underneath the dinettes, you have good storage. So, um, you know, that is nice, a little bit easier to access. You do still have to get down your hands and knees. I would have liked to have seen like a tote or something that you can pull out. But uh, you do have the storage space there. And in lieu of storage up top, they went with bigger windows. A lot of manufacturers are doing that this year, you know, to kind of help bring in that natural light. The lights in the slide are on a dimmer switch too. So you can push and hold that. It'll dim down. You can keep holding it. It'll brighten back up. I would do it, but it completely messes with our camera, so I'm not going to. And this is what I was mentioning earlier with like a coat hook. You know, you might be able to put a coat hook like right here where it's a little bit closer to the door or maybe put it over here and move the control panel. That would make the most sense to me. Um, but that's not what they did. So, but I, you know, this is kind of nice. You have the big opening into the bedroom. Just seems a little more grand, seems nice and open. As I did mention, your control panels are right out here. I do want to point out the water heater runs off both propane and electric. You can turn both those on at the same time for faster recovery. And then this thermostat does run both the ducted AC as well as the ducted heat. The bedroom has like French style slider doors to close that off. Uh, one of the things I do love about passport bedrooms is the fact this is a 60 by 80 residential queen size bed. So, you know, if you are a taller person, your feet aren't going to hang off in here. And the nightstands. I love this too. They have actual nightstands here that, you know, I can put some weight on. I can sit on it. I'm not afraid, you know, it's not just like a panel that's going to fall through. Uh, into my pass through or anything like that. Electrical outlets and again, USB ports, got them everywhere. I uh, need to plug in a CPAP, you have the ability to do that. Wardrobe on both sides with mirrors, storage across the top, LED light here. Um, and then if you want TV, you will have TV right over there. You can see where to hook that up, plus storage underneath the bed. Open that up, show you that real quick. Strut supported, there's that, pretty easy to get to. Uh, one thing I will say about USB ports, I know I kind of said they're everywhere. But one thing that is nice about them is they run off 12 volt. So if you need to pull over on the side of the road and stay the night somewhere and you don't have uh, you know, shore power, you're just running off the battery, you can still plug your phones and stuff into those 12 volts and they'll still operate, or into those USB ports, they'll operate, which is pretty great. All right, in the RV world, you always have trade-offs, right? Pros and cons is not one thing that's necessarily better than the other all the time or else that's what always would be used. In this example, I talked about the U-shaped dinette, how it's a little short. And this is the main reason why. They shortened it up so you can actually walk through here when the slide is closed. So if you need to pull over on the side of the road, you want to access the fridge, you can get back to it. You want to access the bathroom, you can get back to it just like so. If the U-shaped uh, dinette was you know, full width out here, full length, it would cut it off. So uh, they made it a little bit shorter. Also, as you saw up front uh, earlier, you have a huge entrance there, so you have no problem getting to the bed. So when the slide's closed up, you got full access to pretty much everything. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2020 Keystone Passport 267BH. Up front's power tongue jack, making it easier to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. You just got the rocker switch there to raise and lower the tongue and a light in case you're hooking up or disconnecting at night. And as with all power tongue jacks, you have manual override in the rare event that it fails. Behind that, two 20 pound propane tanks with the cover, rails for your battery over to the side, kind of right over here, built into the frame. And there we are. You can see this one has solar prep. Simply buy portable panels, plug it right in there. It'll trickle charge your battery. Got a little bit of diamond dash plating there on the front, helping to protect that front end from some of the rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And around to the side, pass-through storage, covered hinge, so that way it's not gonna have a bunch of rust coming down your door. It's also magnetic, so you can put it up just like that. So when the kids run by and they go to shut it, you don't have a plastic clip that breaks, which is really nice. You take a look inside the pass-through and you will see it is very open. I love that. Nice big pass-through, big doors on both sides so you can fit in some larger items like your bigger chairs, grills, things like that. You'll also see right there you have a light. That light is a motion sensor, so you can set it to the motion setting. So when you open it up, 
it turns on for you. Pretty standard stuff here, power awning with LED light strip, couple outside speakers. Those are connected to the multimedia center inside, which I think I forgot to show you, but it is located right here. So if you need, need to know where it's at, there it is. Uh, more importantly though, is the fact it is Bluetooth capable. So that way when you're out here, if you don't wanna you know, take a step in there and mess with it, you can hook it up via Bluetooth to your phone, play Spotify, do what you need to do. Um, this unit does have a fully enclosed, insulated, and heated underbelly. So if you're camping in a little bit colder weather, uh, as long as you're running the furnace, it will heat up that underbelly for you to help prevent your tanks from freezing up. You'll also see electrical outlet, need to plug anything in. There you go, it's the place to do it. Aluminum alloy wheels on there. Uh, those are great, so that way if uh, you know they, they want them to look nice, they'll continue to do so, not gonna rust out on you. Also spread axle system, spread out a little bit further, helping to reduce sway as you're traveling. Outside kitchen, also magnetic. Boop. And you'll see storage right here. The fridge, mini fridge, this is my favorite part. Place to put some beverages, condiments. You get this little guy, pull that out, lift that up. Two burner cooktop, if you want to do a little bit of cooking. That will hook up to the propane quick connect, which is right underneath there. You can see that. So um, just hook it up right there. If you have a grill or something you want to hook up instead, you can certainly do that too. This is your Key TV multi-source controller. So that uh, basically is a big long name to you put your cable <laughs> from the campsite into there or satellite, plug it in right there, feeds throughout the trailer. Outside shower with hot and cold water access on the campsite. Now, the kitchen doesn't have a sink, so this kind of helps make up for that. Uh, but also just having the outside shower on the campsite just makes it much more convenient, more accessible. You're more likely to use it, period. Opening up the back door, as I mentioned, you can see here, nice big door, plenty of storage space. This, of course, should be folded up and locked when you're traveling. Also up top, uh, it is worth mentioning that the Passport line now has a fully walkable roof. Uh, how do you know if it is a new one with a fully walkable roof or not? Because, you know, it did change with the 2020 model year. Pretty easy to tell. If you take a look right here, you will see power stabilizer jacks. They made that change at the same time. So if it has power stabilizer jacks, it'll also have a fully walkable roof. Mounted to the unit, here's your spare tire. So it's uh, nice and easy to access. Because it doesn't have a square tubular bumper, that is where you store your sewer hose. Coming around to the side, black tank flush. That way it's easy to wash out your black tank. You don't have to stick a hose down the toilet. 30 amp detachable power supply will plug in right there. Underneath, you can see your termination, black and gray tank valves, and if you notice, your valves are insulated. That's a pretty big deal. Again, we're talking colder climates. You want to make sure that your tanks are heated, your water lines are heated, your, your valves are insulated, and uh, they have those insulated back there so they'll stay nice and toasty. That way they're not going to freeze on you. Last thing I want to touch on is your water connections, city water inlet there, fresh tank fill directly in front of it. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2020 Keystone Passport 267BH. If you're interested in this travel trailer and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what they failed, or if you were designing this RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.